If you watch YouTube and you follow any coding tutorials, you've definitely recognized his face. He's considered the king of crash tutorials. That nickname may or may not be true, but don't fact check me on that. Either way, you might have heard that Dino.js came out last week and it's the hottest new technology in the world, and you need to convince your new company that you're a 10-year Dino expert. Look no further, Traversy Media's got you with its 52 minutes of coding, no background music, and just pure, raw development. Think of a new language that doesn't exist yet? He's already made a tutorial on it. This is what it means to be a 10x engineer. Follow his channel right now before your coding skills become obsolete. All right, guys, joking aside, Traversy Media, aka Brad, is one of the most subscribed YouTube channels focused on helping you become a software engineer. I'm sure he won't say this because he's too humble, but he's a great inspiration for anyone that wants to become a software developer. In his channel, his coding tutorials are top notch, they're easy to follow, and they're not too long. It gets straight to the point, and after you finish, you feel like you have a really good understanding of whatever you're learning. He's also had some non-coding tutorials, which I actually personally enjoy because he talks about a lot of challenges new developers have, whether it be imposter syndrome, how to break into the space, and sharing tricks and tips as a developer. Honestly, I love his story, not because it was just an easy path to becoming a developer. If anything, it's completely opposite. He admits it himself that he doesn't fit the mold of a typical software developer. My past isn't one that is common for you know most web developers or programmers or anybody in technology or even anybody that's successful i i had an issue with opiates for years i would say from about 17 years old to uh to about 24. um that part of my life was just hell it was hell it was just addiction it was just needing to get uh, get the drug because I would be sick if I didn't have it. So I just was struggling to just be normal every day. Brad did a lot of drugs, has tattoos, and overall had a pretty rough upbringing. Most people would continue down this spiral motion, but Brad had a wake up call and decided to make a difference in his life. Did he suddenly become a developer the next day he made that decision? Probably not. He started learning how to code by attending community college, then doing the self-taught route, opening up a software and hardware business and freelancing on the side. You can obviously tell that he's went through many different stages in his life, but he definitely persevered. And right now he has a successful thriving business called Traversy Media. 1.1 million subscribers on YouTube, 787 videos. This man is a machine. He's just another fighter. No, he ain't just another fighter. This guy is a wrecking machine and he's hungry. I know Brad won't say it on camera, so I will. He is a great teacher and has a gift for this. I know a lot of people that don't want to watch coding tutorials on YouTube, so to be able to get 1.1 million subscribers to your channel and a lot of it is focused around the actual coding is very, very impressive. As impressive as it is, it's not his talent that got to 1.1 million subscribers. He put in the hard work dedicated his time to making videos and eventually got people to subscribe to his channel. One thing I love about his channel is that he's very honest and straight to the point. He's very honest in his videos about certain technologies and if it's just hype at the moment. Overall, I really believe that his message is more focused on you becoming a better software developer and not just buying his courses. If it was all about the money, all of these free crash courses should be charged and I'm sure a lot of people would pay for it. but. He's obviously contributing to the community and making sure that other people are getting free resources whenever they can. Overall, if you're looking for free tutorials or free crash courses about being a software developer, then this is a must subscribe. So now that we know his little backstory and the struggles that he went through, how do we apply what he has done into our software developer lives? I think number one that we need to point out is that you need to be proud of who you are, good or bad, past or present. Don't let anyone's judgments dictate what you do with your life. You know, I was on government assistance. I was on food stamps and stuff like that at one point. And now I live in a $600,000 house. I have complete financial freedom. I do exactly what I want to do for work, which is write code and help people. And I don't say this whatsoever to, to brag or boast or anything like that. It's to give you a solid example of someone that wasn't handed anything. You know, I know a lot of people are handed money from their family and stuff like that. I had nothing nothing at all I had a criminal record I had no money but I was able to, to get to where I am because I think I, I had a, a pretty positive outlook on um, 
you know, on where I was going to go with my career and in my future. Brad didn't graduate high school. He didn't fit the mold of a software developer. He went to jail, did a lot of opiates and drugs. This wasn't an easy thing to deal with, but did Brad dwell on it forever? Nope. He decided to take matters into his own hands and drown out the noise and make a change in his life. I'm sure there's a lot of doubters in his life that said that he couldn't make it, but being able to overcome these initial obstacles is what got him to this point. I can guarantee you that he probably made a lot of mistakes along the way, and I myself have made so many mistakes in becoming a software developer. Last year, I had about five failed apps that didn't really do too well. I thought I was going to make the new privacy-focused Facebook, but at the end of the day, there's just a lot more moving parts that I considered beyond just coding to really run a successful business. Instead of considering these as failures, what you need to do is consider them as learning opportunities. And just like in coding, even though you may have spent four to five hours on something that was a very small mistake, don't put yourself down. Just take it as a learning experience and try to figure out next time how you could do it faster or how you could be more efficient. Regardless of what crap you went through in the past, it really doesn't define who you are currently and in the future. For Brad and even myself, being a software developer and learning how to code was a next chapter in our lives. And to be completely transparent, I haven't looked back since. The second thing that we can learn from Brad is to stay humble and lend a hand to others. This dude has a million subscribers. Let me repeat that, million subscribers. I don't know how I feel if I had a million subscribers, but I'm pretty sure I'll be tempted to feel very full of myself. Brad has never really been that way based on the videos I've seen. If anything, he does the complete opposite. He shows a lot of humility and is always willing to help out the little YouTubers or the little developers. Video, I want to do something that I've been meaning to do for a while, and that is showcase uh, a bunch of developer related YouTube channels that I'm subscribed to, that I'm a fan of, that I think you guys can benefit from. And there are all types of, ch of channels. Some are tutorials, tutorial based, some are discussion based. Based. Some are live streamers, so all different types of content that uh, I think you can benefit from. And if you have any other suggestions that I don't mention, feel free to add them in the comments. Do the same in your coding journey, regardless of what level you are. There's always going to be people that have just started learning how to code that you can help with. And rather than thinking it's a waste of time or you're going backwards, think of this as a learning opportunity to reinforce the fact that you know what you know. I'm a big fan of paving it forward. So whenever people need my help, regardless of skill level, I try to do my best to take time out of my schedule to help them. Being humble and lending a hand to others will pay dividends in your software development journey. Beyond just coding, showing humility and lending a hand could truly reflect your leadership and you could potentially transition into a project or product manager role if you're interested. And overall, you'll just be a better person. <laughs> and I think that's the most important part. The last thing we can learn from Brad is that you have to put in the work. His channel is nine years old. He works hard and creates good content. As a small YouTuber, I've done the course creation, the video editing, and it is not easy. Your sound may be off, you fumble your words, you think you're recording, but you're actually not. It's a lot of work. Brad has paid his dues. He does his channel in a very admirable way, and I just love how he's just so straightforward and just wants to help you break into the space. I say this pretty often in my videos, but you really need to exercise patience in your coding journey. Don't go hard for a week just to give up the next. Enjoy the process of becoming a software developer, learning how to code, retaining information, and building cool apps. Even as a senior developer, I am still putting in the work on my learning journey. I follow the model of coding with a beginner's mentality. This has kept my drive up and always curious about learning new technologies, frameworks, and paradigms. If you put in the work, have a right game plan, I can assure you that you will become a better software developer. If you made it this far, thanks for watching my analysis on Brad. I hope that you're able to find some tangible bits of information from experience. And most importantly, hear me out here, is it pronounced Deno or Dino? Mr. Brad thinks it's pronounced Deno, so I want to know what you guys think. Let me know. If you like content like this, hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.